Hello everybody, welcome to the Red Men TV. My name is Ben Kelly. This is the Liverpool Development Watch back for 2019. We did say in the last show that it was going to be a monthly thing, but um, uh, you know, the beginning of January, it's Christmas and New Year period, the youth sides take a break, uh, some of the, the European leagues take a winter break as well, so a lot of the players weren't playing and we just thought we'd be better off leaving it until February. So as I said before, this will be a monthly show at the beginning of each month to give you an update on the loanees and youth sides associated with Liverpool Football Club and let's just get straight into it. A lot has happened since the last show, obviously because it's been about two months now, but I'm going to keep things as concise as possible. We'll start with obvious Jaria, who ended his loan spell with Rangers um, and was reloaded to Championship Strugglers Reading. He's only played a few games so far for the Royals, but has made a relatively good start. I spoke to Reading fan Jake Moore on Twitter, who said um, he's only played a couple of games so far, so I'd say it's hard to have a solid judgment on him, but I've been impressed so far, been positive on the ball and provided an extra attacking outlet for us, which we've lacked all season. Um, he's demonstrated his pace on occasion and set up our consolation goal against Derby with a lovely through ball that put one of our forwards through on goal to score. I'm excited to see how he fares after a few more games, but can definitely see talent there. I think, think he's nursing a slight injury too at the moment, which obviously is a factor. Um, thanks very much to that by the way. Follow Jake Moore on Twitter at JakeMoore87. That would be great. Thanks very much, Jake. Um, so there you go. There's your little update on Ovi Ajari. He's obviously moved away from Stephen Gerrard and Ryan Kent at Rangers, who we'll talk about a little bit later um, and decided to come back to English football. I'd say the quality of the champ uh, Scottish Championship and the um, Championship in England is probably just about the same. So he's not taking a leap down or, or a leap up in terms of quality and competitiveness um, and obviously Redden are in a bit of a relegation fight as well so if he can keep them up or a contribute to keeping them up it might actually turn out to be a more valuable loan than it was in Scotland anyway. Nathaniel Klein was loaned out to Bournemouth after seemingly asking Jurgen Klopp to be loaned out. It's a difficult one, this, because it now appears as though we need him. Obviously, Joe Gomez is still struggling, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, this is going out on Friday, but it's being filmed on Monday, so I don't know who played, obviously, at this point um, against Leicester on Wednesday night. Um, he started well for Bournemouth, though. He's made three starts so far for Eddie Howe. And he's already made some solid performances. They kept a clean sheet last weekend um, in the Premier League. And overall, you know, he's just being the same Nathaniel Klein that we know he can be at the back very, very solid, was never so great going forward like Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think that's why in the end Trent was given the, the, you know, the higher up in the pecking order by Klopp. For Bournemouth and Eddie Howe, he's a perfect defensive option because of how solid he is at the back and I think it'll be a very successful loan there. Whether Jurgen Klopp will keep him this summer, I'm not sure. Um, I highly doubt it if you know, Klein wants to further his career at this point. Um, he needs to be playing more in the Premier League more often. If that means a move to Bournemouth permanently or a move to somewhere else in the Premier League, then I think Klein will probably push for that that rather than warm the bench basically at Liverpool. Two players who continue to catch the eye on loan are Harry Wilson at Derby and Marco Grubic at Hertha Berlin. And this is one of the reasons that we changed this show to, to a monthly thing because it was basically just Harry Wilson, Harry Wilson, Harry Wilson every week. Uh, every time he takes the field for Derby, he's so good. Um, he scores a worldie, you know, he's doing it all the time. Um, Grubic has had his fair share of injury problems so far this season, but when he's been on the pitch, he's really impressed people out in Germany. Um, ankle problems have kept him out of 10 Bundesliga's games so far this season. Uh, but he used the winter break to his advantage to regain some fitness and has played twice since his return and he got a goal against Schalke on Friday, last Friday. Um, a really impressive goal as well. The good times have of course continued for Harry Wilson as he goes from strength to strength with Frank Lampard at Derby. Um, it was a key man in seeing them through the third round FA Cup replay with Southampton. He scored a really good free kick there which was a catalyst for a comeback to make it 2-2 and they went through on penalties that night. He also got a good goal and a good assist in the game against Redden at the weekend. He was up against over Yajari obviously in that game um, and he came out on top in the battle of the low knees if you like. And that game against Reading moves up to 12 goals and 4 assists in 27 appearances in all competitions this season. Not a bad return at all for a young player. Could Jurgen Klopp move both or either of these players on this summer? Now, that's the question that I've been asking on Twitter yesterday. They're probably both worth at least 20 million each at the moment so are they expendable in Klopp's eyes? If he fancied Wilson to make it, would he have loaned him out this season? It's a question that's sort of been knocking around Twitter. I've seen a lot of few journalists um, or in the nose if you like um, on, on Twitter discussing this matter over the last few days so I put a Twitter, I put a Twitter poll out yesterday um, I'm going to read out the results because I think it's really interesting sort of the views on this because for me at the moment you know we've got no real left back at winger for Sadio Mane 
And you know, if we if we did have somebody like Harry Wilson, or if Klopp really fancied Harry Wilson, would he have perhaps recalled um, Harry Wilson from the loan? Would he have loaned him out in the first place if he saw him? Really did see him as like a valuable backup to Sadio Mane. So I asked four questions of you all on Twitter yesterday. Um, the first of all, regarding both of these players, um, will Liverpool sell Harry Wilson in the summer? Do you think Liverpool will sell Harry Wilson in the summer? Um, Eighty-four percent of you voted no uh, of six hundred and fourteen votes. Um, 16 voting yes so obviously a lot of people thinking that Jurgen Klopp is going to keep hold of him um, I then asked do you think Liverpool should sell Harry Wilson for the right price and by the right price I mean 20 25 million maybe even pushing 30 million if his good form continues until the end of the season and again 85% of you said no we should keep hold of him only 15% hold it saying yes of 60 616 votes sorry um, the question three, do you think Liverpool will sell Marco Gruwich this summer? And 64% voted in favour of yes. Um, interesting one because obviously James Milner, a lot of the conversation that then rumbled from this, you know, noticed in the replies was that James Milner isn't going to go forever um, and Marco Gruwich would basically fit nicely into a two-man midfield, which I think I agree with. Um, whether or not we, we think that he's actually worth more in terms of financial value rather than on the pitch for us um, is a different matter altogether. Obviously, we don't know what sort of scout reports being put together pre-season will be key as well because I imagine those players will be involved um, and they'll have sort of maybe one last chance to show Jurgen Klopp um, what they can do in this team but yeah Marco Gruic in theory could be a really good play you know you can imagine him alongside a Henderson or even a Fabinho you know he's very powerhouse he's not quite a, a traditional DM in the sense of how Fabinho does it where he will just be purely defensive he's a bit more I don't want to compare him to Yaya Torre, but I think he's a bit more that style of player, if you get me. I think he's very more energetic. He's a bit more powerful. Um, I think he can be like that. He's got a bit more of a goal threat to him. So I think that would be the way for him to go if we were going to keep him in terms of playing him alongside of Fabinho. But look, there's loads of options there. and I'm sure Jurgen Klopp will be looking at that probably over the summer after the season's ended. Uh, anyway, back to the poll. Uh, the final question that I asked, would, would you like to see both of these players sold if it meant him we brought in another marquee signing like Timo Werner with the fund? So let's say we get 20, 25 million for them both. That's somewhere between 40 and 50 million. If we could sign Timo Werner for £61 million, which is the price being quoted in the papers at the moment, and you could basically fund that with these two players, would you do it? 55% voted yes, 45% voted no. Really interesting one, that, because I think that's obviously that was the closest of the polls um, in total. I think a lot of people voted no because we should be like basically funding that transfer of our own back anyway. We shouldn't have to sell to buy. But you know, it's just a hypothetical question, really. I think it's a really interesting one. What would people prefer? Would you prefer keeping somebody like Harry Wilson, who's just you know clearly got talent and really you know developing? Or would you rather just spunk out the money and bring in a £61 million team over and who's going to slot in ahead of Bobby Firmino and basically be one of the missing pieces in the jigsaw that we've got in the team at the moment? Obviously, the the, the slight majority voted yes. Um, I, I, I don't know what I'd do. I think I really like Harry Wilson. I think I think I agree with the people in the replies, by the way. I think we should be funding that move for Timo Werner without having to sell. But... I do think that you know Harry Wilson in particular is such a good talent. I think if he was around this squad of Liverpool players for an extended period of time, imagine learning from Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. That could take him up to a whole other level. That's my opinion on it. He's a Wales international as well, so he's got into, he's got international experience, which is priceless. And I just think I just think he's one of them where we should absolutely try and keep him in the team. But I'm not sure Jurgen Klopp fancies him. I think that's one of the points that's been raised on Twitter. Um, and I think you know if Klopp fancied him, if Klopp thought he was good enough would he be at Liverpool right now and I'm kind of like I think he would but we'll have to see what happens over the summer I think that's the be all and end all of it so there we go. There's my thoughts on Marco Gruic and Harry Wilson. Uh, let us know what you think about them down in the comments below. Should we be selling them? Should we be keeping them in the side? Let us know. In other loan news, Kamil Grabara completed a loan move to Danish side Age FRS in early January. Um, it was basically due to Klopp's preference towards Kermin Kallaire as his first choice keeper. Um, it made sense for Grabara to go out. Um, they've been on a winter break, so at the time of recording, he's not actually played yet. He's, he, they play tonight on, a, on the Monday night. This is 
Friday now. Um, so so they, they, I don't know whether he played or not. Um, I'll be able to tell you more about that in next month's development watch. Um, ben Woodburn ended his loan spell at Sheffield United um, at basically getting frustrated by the lack of playing time at Bramall Lane. His last game came with a 10-minute appearance in November in a game against Nottingham Forest. He hasn't played for the under-23s either since returning to the club. Um, so to be honest, I mean, I think I've raised this before in the show a little bit. I'm seriously worried about his future. I just don't see a scenario really where he stays at Liverpool long term. And it's a shame because he, he is a talent and obviously he came on that goal against Leeds in the League Cup. I remember being there and you're thinking, oh God, he's now our youngest goal scorer. He's going to cut really kick on now and be one of the best players you know going forward um, but but he never really did that and I've said it before on on Steve's show I think I've said it on this show for me it's because of his physicality I mean you know, look at the size of me I'm not much smaller than Ben Woodburn in, to, in terms of you know bulk um, you know he's just a small lad and I think he's just not physical enough for the Premier League he needs to bulk up if he's going to stay in this division I just don't see a world at the moment where you, who's he going to whose place is he going to take in the side realistically I mean he's supposed to be an attacking midfielder if we're playing Roberto Firmino number 10 first choice what chances has he got you know he's, he's going up against one of the best in that position in the world one of the most unique players in the world in terms of how Bobby Firmino plays that role he just can't match it and I think going forward I think he's really have to consider his future in the summer because he, he needs he needs to play and he, he needs to make his own career sort of you know if he goes to say I don't know a championship side and then builds his way up a bit like a bit like Jack Grealish and obviously Jack Grealish didn't move away from a big club but if he goes to somewhere like Villa or, you know, who else in the championship, Brentford or whoever, right? If he goes there and builds a name up for himself like Jack Grealish has done, he could end up with a move back to the Premier League in, a, in the next few years, you know, having got a bit more experience, not at the pressure of being on loan, you know, having to impress a, a, a manager at Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp. The, all this might be coming into it, and I think that would be the best for him. I think if he moved on this summer permanently and tried to make a career elsewhere, I think that would probably be the best option, personally, um, for Ben Woodburn. Steven Gerrard and Ryan Kent sit second in the SPL after an overall solid period. They, of course, won the Old Firm derby on December 29th um, with the goal from Ryan Jack with Ryan Kent getting the assist there. Um, Kent also scored yesterday or last Sunday um, against Livingston as Rangers bounced back for a defeat against Kilmarnock on Wednesday 23rd of January. Um, we've seen loads of great interviews and press conferences from Gerard during his time at Ibrox. And you can really see how passionate he is about the job. You know, it, this is a player or a, a man, um, in, you know, a manager now, but you know, this is a guy who knows what it's like and knows how it feels to live and die for the shirt you're wearing. So as a player in that dressing room, it must be, I'd hate to be in there after a loss or after a lackluster performance because when it comes to Steven Gerrard, he's expecting you to give everything for that shirt, that you know, that badge that is on your chest. Um, so in terms of motivation, it must be like, not not scary, but just so I said, motivating, I suppose, to go out on that pitch every time for Steven Gerrard and give your all, not only for the manager, but for the club, because you know you know what Steven Gerrard has basically done at Liverpool through pure passion. You know, For years, Steven Gerrard didn't have a great team around him at Liverpool. The 4 5 side is the prime example of that. Just Steven Gerrard got us through Istanbul, basically on pure emotion alone, you know, just, just driving and, and wanting to give everything he possibly could. He picked us up by the scruff of the neck in that game. And that's just one example of how emotion can get you through and, and, and you know, get you a result sometimes. You know, it's the extreme example, but it's still an example. So these players for, for Rangers must feel like gods every time they walk onto the pitch because the motivation that they get from that dressing room in terms of that is the prime example. That is that is the the role model to look up to in terms of going on, giving everything for the club, everything for the fans, everything for the shirt. Um, you know, and like I said before, I'd hate to be in that dressing room. You know, they lost they lost last week to Kilmarnock, um, and it was a poor poor, poor performance. They won one, they lost they lost two one, um, and uh, you know. Imagine going back into that dressing room, the bollocking that you would receive from Steven Gerrard is enough to make you never want to put in that type of performance ever again. And you know, and I think that's such a great thing. And I cannot wait to see where Steven Gerrard's career takes him. Hopefully it's back at Liverpool. But you know, as I said before, it's been a solid period for Rangers. He's doing really well up there. He deserves a lot of credit for staying in touch with Celtic. Celtic have had a, haven't had a great season so far. They sit top at the moment, but there's definitely a title race on in Scotland. Let's talk about the U sides then. Both teams took a bit of a break over 
over the Christmas period, but they've been both involved in some big games of late. Liverpool under the 23s have somewhat recovered from what was quite a difficult start to the season of late. They're now unbeaten since that difficult 7-0 defeat to Villarreal in November, which I discussed on the last show. They sit fourth in Premier League 2 and are still in both the Premier League Cup and the Premier League International Cup, which is basically their equivalent of the FA Cup and the, and the European competitions. Um, a 2-0 win against Swansea was enough to keep their hopes of getting out of their group alive. Now, if you don't know how the Premier League International Cup work, it basically is made of six groups and the, the, the winners of each group obviously go through. But it's also then the, the best two runners up um, for, for, from it, from the groups that, that, that make it through to the course finals as well, and that makes the eight. Um, so I, I think I think the Euros work like this as well, where it's like the top seeded runners up depend on like goal difference and, and goal score and things like that, maybe head to head results. Um, so Liverpool, with that win against Swansea, kept alive their possibility of making it through to the next round. Um, we've seen some more promising signs that we have some real gems still in the academy at the moment. Bobby Duncan, who obviously signed from Manchester City in the summer, he'd been performing highly for the under 18s he's now starting to get minutes for Neil Critchley at under 23 level which is a big jump under tw under 18s to under 23s are is one of the biggest leaps you can make really you know especially but the older you get the more experienced you get the bigger the leaps become um, so if he can start replicating his form for the under 18s in any form really to at the under 23 level you know if he can can start getting a few goals at that level, then that's a really good thing. It's all well and good, really, banging them in for the under-18s, but you've really got to show that you can adapt to that higher level with better players. So if Bobby Duncan over the next, well, until the end of the season, can start hitting more goals for Neil Critchley, then um, you know we, we might have quite a player in our hands. Obviously, one of the big success stories of the academy at the moment is Jakarna Hoover, who, despite being harshly sent off versus Brighton on January 14th, obviously made the side or was subbed on very early against Wolves in the FA Cup third round did okay. I thought I was at the game, um, you know, with Chris and some of the lads. Um, you know, the, he, he was all right. You know, he's a 16 year old kid. What can you expect? You can't expect too much from him. But he did the simple things well. I thought, and, and overall had had a good enough game for a 16 year old. Um, so, like I say, you know, another one to nurture for for Neil Critchley. You know, he's got quite a big job in his hands there. I think to to really help develop this centre back because he's clearly a talented player. He's clearly going to be a really good player if he's. If he's developed correctly. Um, I don't know how long it'll be until we see him again. You know, the same with the usual suspects like Curtis Jones, Adam Lewis, Matty Virtue, um, who else? Rafa Camacho, all these players. I'm not quite sure how many more times we'll see them this season, especially with you know the competitiveness in the squad and just how every game is so crucial. Um, but you know, going forward, the summer is going to be massive for all those players. They'll have a real opportunity there. Curtis Jones got real invaluable experience sort of last summer in, in America with the squad. He'll get another opportunity to do that this summer as well as some of the other players. So you know, like there's lots of good players in this in this academy at the moment. Liverpool is one of the best in the country, and we're really starting to show that with some of the the talent that we've got on offer across the under 18s right up to the first team. The under 18s have continued their flying form, and at the time. Of Recording hit top of the league despite losing 3 2 to Man United in the quarter final of the Premier League Cup last weekend. Liverpool were 2 0 up, but had defender Morgan Boys dismissed on the hour. United came back to equalise and then eventually won the game in extra time. A free kick from Mason Greenwood winning it for them. Um, other than this, they've won the previous two games since returning from the winter break and will be looking to continue their form until the end of the season. There's bags of goals in this side, and one of the other strikers who've been catching the eye all season, other than Bobby Duncan has been Paul Glatzel. He's been continuing to perform at high levels in that team. Hopefully he'll start to get some minutes from Neil Critchley as the season goes on. He got a hat-trick against Accrington Stanley in the FA Youth Cup on Monday the 21st of Jan. Liverpool progressed in that competition with a 4-0 win. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the youth roundup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Liverpool development watch. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I'll be back next month with another update on the loans and the youth sides. For now, though, tell us in the comments below what you thought of anything discussed today subscribe to the channel like the video and i will see you next time on the liverpool development watch bye bye